What is up, Nation of Sneakies? Sneaky P here. After week one of the Chicago Cougars franchise, we just beat the Cincinnati Bengals 30-24. to I am so happy to get that win, uh, especially considering we started out in a new stadium. You know, we, we got to win our first game as the Chicago Cougars. I think that's really important for morale. Plus, you always want to win a game in a new city, a new stadium, whatever the case is. It's usually an iconic game. Um, I don't really consider preseason as counting, so big win for us for sure, as you can see. Um, as we saw last year, you know, every game really matters in the division race, so the fact that we got up on the Colts and Titans early on is a good thing. Uh, the Texans, I believe, won the division last year, and they just destroyed us both times we played them, so that's unfortunate that they got a win, but we're a better team now. We're improved, so hopefully uh, we won't have those same problems that we had before. Moving forward forward let's go ahead and look at some of the draft stories really quick William and Mary cornerback Xavier Williams aka Professor X seems to know where the ball is going before it's thrown that is an awesome nickname and I love cornerback so that's definitely somebody worth uh looking into doesn't get better than Arizona State's linebacking duo of the Juan Robbins and Calvin Smith uh, again, I, I'm big on defenders. I like the fact that there's two linebackers that work well together. It makes me think of the 49ers defense. Circus strongman Dion Marcus is a raw town who will start a defensive tackle for Temple. Uh, that's, that's a little bit odd. You can pretty much guarantee he has 99 strength, so that's interesting. Washington wide receiver Clifford Franklin has heart speed and desire, but hands of butter. Sounds a lot like Cecil Shorts or uh, even Golden Tate at this point. Uh, so that, that might not be a great thing for me. After a brief stint as a minor league pitcher, Iowa's Israel Stark returns to school as a backup quarterback. Wow! He was projected as the number one pick last year. He decided to go to the MLB draft instead. Uh, he's had an exceptional college career, but is Samuel Berdeski the top pick in this year's draft? Um, sounds like a... Uh a linebacker name but he has a, a guard number or an offensive lineman number anyway um, this one that's really interesting about Israel Stark like I said he was projected the number one pick he chose to go to the MLB draft instead so it's kind of weird even if the MLB career doesn't work out it's weird that he would be a backup quarterback considering how good he supposedly was um, so that's really interesting something to keep an eye on uh, obviously I'm pretty good at quarterback right now but who knows who knows he might be a late round pick now and just as a backup be worth getting uh, let's go ahead and check out some of the league stats really fast and uh, you know these new sliders they were good and bad uh, or I guess the sliders were good the team overall was was hit and miss you know we did some things very very well and we did others horribly one of which I'm, I'm guessing we're about to see at the top of this list up here is we defended the pass horribly I don't know what happened it wasn't even that um it wasn't even that ah oh gosh I can't even think right now it wasn't that Andy Dalton there I say it as it pops up it wasn't even that Andy Dalton uh, made unbelievable passes a lot of it honestly was just the fact that his wide receivers were wide open nobody was near him I usually run through game flow um, when I'm playing the game, I do this for a few reasons. One, the quarter or the coach that I hire is picking the plays. I kind of like that that concept, especially in terms of this series where I'm the owner. Um, but two, it makes editing a lot easier for me. If I were to pick all of the plays, it would add like five hours of editing onto each game. Now, the the flip side of this though is um. Oh man, I, I just lost my train of thought completely. Oh, I was gonna say I do kind of uh, pick plays on a on a rare occasion, like if it's like third and long, uh, you know, I'll do a quarter defense or something like that. But for the most part, I really avoid picking plays. Um, the other thing that we really struggled with is our wide receivers could not get open down the field at all. I don't know if this was the Bengals playing outstanding defense. Or, I, I don't know if we were just struggling. I don't know. I don't know. But our receivers could not get open. Um, we very much struggled in the passing game. Now, why in the world is he starting over Drew Brees? I'm going to have to look into that. I, I'm assuming he's hurt, I guess. I'll, I'll have to look into that. Uh, rushing the ball. No, Sean Moreno led the way. But, yeah, we did struggle with certain things. Now, 
Um, I only added our run block up by two points, but you know, last season I don't think we had a single rusher go for over 60 yards in a game. We very much struggled running the ball last season. Um, so I, I don't know if this is the sliders taking effect or if it's the fact that I drastically improved my offensive line and got a much better running back. I want to attribute to that 5.1 yards of carry is not all that unrealistic, so I'm okay with it for now. If it seems to be, you know, a little bit too easy, uh, I will switch it at that point and make it a little more difficult again. Because, um, you know, I want to keep this realistic. Now, an issue I have, 29 carries. I thought I set it up to where Frank Gore would be splitting the uh, the load with them, but that does not seem to be the case. I really want to get Frank Gore involved, but I don't want to manually sub them in and out constantly. Um, so I was thinking maybe doing it at halftime, but like in the first game, no Sean Moreno was killing it in the first half. There'd be no point in subbing him out. So if anybody has a solution to this, please let me know. I want to run a two running back set. I don't want to have Frank Gore wasting away on the bench. That seems pointless. Um, so yeah, receiving uh, Nelson and Cobb, the teammates, leading the way up here. Then Mohamed Sanu, who killed me. 11 catches, 103 yards, and two touchdowns. We definitely need to keep an eye on him as the season goes along. I think he's a very underrated player. DJ Williams, 20 tackles. Derek Johnson with 16 sacks. Let's check these out. Brooks Reed had three. Now, I'm pretty sure I saw somewhere that a player that used to play for North Carolina, it's escaping me who it was, got four sacks. Um, so I don't know. Sometimes this game glitches, though, and it won't show stats over here. I don't know why it does that. It seems like every Madden has this issue, but um, yeah, I don't know. But Geno Hayes also got two sacks. So there we go. We got a player up on that list. Always like to see our guys up here. Uh, I think we have a few others that got up here as well. Where are they? Maybe not. Well, somebody else had a sack that game. It might just be that glitch. I don't know. I think somebody else had a sack. Ladarius Webb with two interceptions. And Derek Johnson, two interceptions to go with his 16 tackles. And 112 return yards. He had to have gotten a touchdown, right? He had two touchdowns. Oh my gosh. Whenever you have a defensive player getting a touchdown, you're likely going to win the game. Because that just throws momentum completely in the opposite direction. But to get two, I mean, that's an incredible performance. Plus 16 tackles. Wow. You know he got player of the week. Uh, let's check out the other interceptions here. Latulale, and we know he got a touchdown. Uh, Manuel Afo got one. Nice. Uh, Patrick Willis. All right, all right. Michael Huff, so two uh, interceptions for the 49ers there. And going down the list here. Um, it doesn't show Donner Maddox. We, we all know he got an interception. And that's what I'm talking about. This game just glitches sometimes. It's really weird. I, I don't know why that is or what. Fumbles forced. Let's check that out really quick. Uh, not too many fumbles being forced. Michael Huff did force one to go with his interception. Fumbles recovered one. Let's see if there's any blocks. Safeties. All right. Well, we know the Bengals got a safety on me. Um, of course, that stat's gone too. I, I don't understand why these stats are the way they are, but not entirely accurate. However, Danell Ellerby did get a safety. Good for him. Touchdowns. Derek Johnson. We saw that he got two. Uh, just checking out some there's a lot of defensive touchdowns this week Michael Huff in the 49ers that's what I'm talking about uh, there Latulale he had an incredible rookie season for me I'm really excited to have him on my team uh, and he's picking up right where he left off last season so that's awesome to see although he didn't really get interceptions last season he might have gotten one or two I don't really remember but he uh, killed it in the sack category and Patrick Willis got a touchdown too. Wow. So two defensive touchdowns for the 49ers as well. And Emmanuel Afo, the rookie. Uh, we did see him in the uh, preseason. And he seemed to be a pretty good player. Uh, kicking. Let's see. Mason Crosby. Four from four. Uh, four of four. 56 as the long. Let's check out the long here. Yep. He actually had the long. Then Mike Nugent, who played against us. Three of five for 60%. Uh, the other two bounced off the field goal. Pole, and I'm pretty sure actually that they were 50 yard attempts as well. Let's go ahead and check that out. Yep, one of three from 50 or more, which honestly that's not really his fault because the wind was like 13 miles an hour in that game. It was really bad. So the fact that he made one from 50 is pretty impressive. Blair Walsh, welcome to the Cougars. A very nice opening game for him. Three of three, long of 53 yards. I almost said Billy Walsh, the guy from Entourage. Great show. Uh, let's go ahead and check out the players of the week really quick. Um, and I'm pretty sure just by looking over those stats, we know who they are. Derek Johnson, obviously. Uh, DJ Williams, Aaron Rodgers, and Peyton Manning. Very well deserved by all of them. Uh, good opening week. 
So, yeah, I think that's going to be it for this episode, guys. If you are excited about being back in the regular season, the uh, Chicago Cougars starting their franchise off correctly with the win, let me know. Hit that like button, guys. Every time you leave some support, whether it be a comment, hitting the like button, it helps my channel grow. Uh, which is amazing guys. I always appreciate it and I'm going to try to get back to the point where I'm responding to every comment uh, I simply did not have time uh, for the longest period I was not honestly looking at my YouTube at all outside of reading the email notification So I was reading everybody's comment, but I can't respond to it through my phone um, The only time I can do that is if I'm actually on my computer So I have been reading everybody's email obviously you guys know I enjoy uh, speaking with you guys back so I'm going to try to get back to the point where I can respond to them all. But again, guys, I appreciate the support. Thank you so much. And I will see you guys in week two as the Chicago Cougars take on the New York Jets. Later, guys.